Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest is one of the stars of the fantastic Netflix show Lost in Space, which is premiering its second season just in time for the holidays on December 24th. Uh, in the show, Mina Sunwell plays Penny Robinson, a member of the Robinson family who have crash landed on an alien planet and are fighting for their lives. Let's take a look. I know he's out there somewhere. I'm not going without him. How would we even know where to look for the robot? It's not like he left you a map. Or breadcrumbs to follow. Maybe he did. Maybe they're out there. What do you say, Robinsons? Ready to go through the looking glass? I'm gonna find Tim. Good. Everybody, please put your hands together for Mina Sunwall. Let's hear it. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, my uh, fellow friend in denim. How's I know. It going? I was saying we should have just said that we planned it. We did. Oh, yeah, sorry. 100% planned it. Uh, congrats on season two of the show. Thank you so much. Uh, how was the shoot? It was so Where do you fun. guys shoot? We film most of the season in Vancouver, in okay. Canada, but this season we actually went to Iceland for a little bit, which was insane. Wow. And then also a little bit in Alberta, in Canada. Wow, okay, so fairly far up north, no matter what. Yep. You're always up north. We're always in the cold, yep. Always in the cold, right. <laughs> um, where, is, are the studios located up there as well? Yeah, all the studios are in um, Vancouver. Oh, wow, so you can just sort of hop out into the cold and then back into the studio. Oh, yeah, and then go back into the fake ice in the studio and then go to the real ice outside and then back, yeah. Uh, now, the cast of the show is incredible, but first and foremost, as a, a child of the 90s, I have to ask, what is it like working with Parker Posey? It's amazing. Yeah. And to watch her work and break down a scene is such a learning experience. She goes into every single detail of what you're, th she knows what you're thinking before you're thinking it, first of all. And she goes off of that and she uses it in the scene. And to see her go into breaking down a scene, understanding it, and then filming it, and then thinking about it afterwards, I've learned a lot. Does she, when you're, when she's filming, I mean, she is an actress of consistent spontaneity, it feels like, on camera. Um, she's go for broke in a way that I totally, that I love. Is that things that she tells you that she's going to do that you're expecting, or are you just constantly reacting to what she's bringing to the No, to the it's table? all reacting. It's definitely reacting. Um, which is also very Dr. Smith, which works, because Dr. Smith catches you by surprise a lot. So we can do a scene 15 times, and then she'll do it 15 different ways. It always keeps you on your toes. Um, so talk to me about where your character left off at the end of the first season. We left off with the kids kind of, the family's finally back together and we were sucked through a wormhole. We were trying to get back to the Resolute and we're lost now, we're stranded. And you see in the beginning of this season, it's seven months since then. Last season, Penny was very insecure. She didn't really have her place in the family. And it feels like because she's the middle child and Judy was always John's favorite and, and Will was always Maureen's favorite, she didn't really have anybody to tell her, you know, you're doing the right thing. You're doing something good. Um, and so this season we see her come into her own a little bit and, and learn who she is and how she fits into the big picture. What was that like for you as an actress to have a character kind of coming into her own and, and changing? It was, I mean, I, she and I are very similar ages. And so we were going through some of the same things at the same time. And it felt like some of the things that I was dealing with and some of the insecurities 
were exactly mirroring what she was going through, you know, not knowing when to give yourself credit or she can do something. I'm some- 35 and I do that, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, great. So go I've, away. I've got a yeah. way to go. Yeah, there we go. Don't worry. Okay, well, um, it's it was... It was nice to see that parallel, definitely. And and to be able to take some of what she's going through and use it in my own life. I mean, I've learned a lot from her reactions. I always say that the writers are giving me growing tips because they'll write a reaction to a scene and I'll be like, oh, that's good. I should use that. Do you think they're writing towards you at this point as well in the second season? Now that the first is done, you are there, you know, you are the person playing this role that they're writing towards your strengths or things that may even be happening with you? A little bit. We get to have a conversation before the season is fully written and while they're creating some of the the base of it, of what we want to see in the strengths and what we want to see happen a bit for for each of our characters and then overall. So it it becomes a bit of a collaborative process, which is actually really nice because we are so, so into the mindset of these characters at this point. And when we're filming, we spend six months with them living in our head that we do end up merging into one. So it's nice when it's a little closer to yourself. Are the writers up there with you guys? Are they down in LA? They come back and forth. Um, We don't get all of the episodes at once. We get them one by one or two and then one. So they are continuing to write while we film the first couple. Um, but they come back and forth. They like to spend. And time. now the show, by and large, is just the five of you, six of you, right? Sorry, three, two, f- five, six of you. Yeah. By and <laughs> by and by and large, I mean, you know, there's other there's there's other stuff. But what is that like? Does that I mean that has to be something where you were handpicked because you'd all be good with each other because you're going to be stuck together for a long time. Yeah, it's funny. We never really did chemistry reads for the family or we didn't really meet each other until we started to put it together and started filming and we work very well together and we are the dynamic that you see on screen is very similar to what's happening off screen between you know the dad jokes and and molly is very maternal and then um the siblings we always pick jokes at each other that parker's like a kooky aunt that Parker, comes in and out every is, now a, now. is a bit of the aunt um but it's it feels good, yeah. And we were all, I guess we were picked because we are quite similar to the characters that we're playing. I mean, I am definitely not a science-oriented person. I am more of, of a reader and of a writer and of a people person. And I see a lot of similarities between myself and Penny. And Max is very ambitious and loves biology. And, and um, he definitely would be the one to bring a robot home if it was in all of us. Yeah. I would bring a robot home. You wouldn't bring a robot home? I... I mean, I'd be suspicious of that robot. I'd but. probably ask my mom first before Fair bringing him You're a good kid. House. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm the only child, so I have to be the best and So the am I. Oh, nice. Also an only child. When did you start acting? I was, well, I all, my first role and my proudest role, I was the crying baby. And I was about eight months old, and nothing will ever top that for me. Um, but I You're wanted. The crying baby in what? In the Maury Povich show. <laughs> it was great. Um, I wanted to... What was the part? The crying baby. How does... But there are no parts on the Maury Povich show. No, I was just a... I was just a crying... I was literally just a crying baby in kind of a skit in the middle. I was eight months old. I don't remember. I know. I I, I apologize. (laughs) I get that. I'm not not asking what was it like to work on the set of the Maury (laughs) Povich show when you were eight months old. I'm just curious, as someone who's seen the Maury Povich show, I've never seen sketches on the show or anything. Usually people just run out on stage and yell at each other, and then they run away. Or they run out on stage, and they are the crying baby, and then they run away. We don't know. But your parents weren't like guests on the show. No. You weren't. I was just... You were cast. I was just the crying baby. Yeah, I was just cast as the crying baby. Um, But then when I was... But but, but wait, back to this morning. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. (laughs) Um, When I was was a little bit older, but still very young, I loved musical theater, and I would always put on these really elaborate performances for my parents in our living room with, like, dolls with names and casts and a proper storyline. And I wanted to start auditioning I wanted to do it and we went to a casting call and I did a monologue and I started crying because I was so nervous in the middle of the monologue and luckily I had to cry in the scene and they were like okay uh, calm down first of all um and I started working and it was it was good they cast you based off of that based off of the crying yeah (laughs) the first thing that I saw you in was Maggie's Plan a movie that I loved um, that has an incredible cast. It does have an incredible in it. Cast. What was it like doing that movie? It was it was one of the first times that I was on set, just watching and learning and absorbing everything. Like Ethan, Ethan, Ethan Hawke, Hawk, Julianne, Julianne Moore, Moore Greta. Greta Gerwig, yeah. um, 
And I would sit and, and whenever I wasn't speaking, just watching how, again, how they break down a scene and go into the details and change certain reactions because it doesn't feel real or it doesn't feel authentic or how you can change one word of one intention and it shapes the whole thing differently. That's when I really kind of fell in love with how you can understand how to make another person that's watching you feel something mm -hmm. that can be completely different from when you're fe feeling when you're doing it. And also that there's a craft yeah. to the whole thing. It's not just like, I'm going to cry or I'm going to do this. It's like, figure out exactly what you have to say and how you're going to say it. And yeah. what does that mean? And it's, it's a very interesting study of psychology almost, of not only how, how are you thinking and how are you going to watch this, but how can I make you, how can I evoke a certain emotion in you just based off of what I'm saying? And uh, what, how was it working with the, uh, the other siblings of Lost in Space? We've it's talked good. mainly about the adults, but yeah. what about the siblings? It's good. I mean, it is also, it's very similar to one of the dynamic in between that is similar as well, especially when we're tired or it's a late night or something. We get so goofy that it's hard to contain us at times. And we are very close in between the three of us to the point where there are so many outtakes or... It was at the rap party of season one, and then they did a smaller one for season two that they put together a kind of gag reel for us to see. In between every shot, we're dancing. I don't even remember doing this, but we one of us starts dancing, and then everybody kind of falls in between. And it feels almost like when you're just goofing off with your siblings. You know what I mean? Like, we get tired, and we get stressed, and we get to those points where it's like, just, just don't talk to me right now. You know what I mean? Um, but it feels, again, it feels very familial. One of your uh, co-stars had a, a, a great movie that just came out, Waves. Did you get the chance to see it and I see her performance? I haven't had the chance to see it yet. I'm going to see it this week, though. I'm ready to be like the soccer mom in the background. Cheer her on. Cheering her on, yeah, every time she comes on screen. She's it's going to be awful she's, for her. She's very good in it. Yeah, yeah. I've heard. I can't wait. Um, so Lost in Space Season 2, did it go anywhere that was unexpected for you, or had they pitched you pretty much what, that, what your arc was going to be throughout the season? It definitely went in places that I wasn't expecting. I knew that, I kind of knew the overall arc, but it has a very sad ending that I didn't know about until, because again, they're writing while we're filming. So they, they have an overall idea of the story, but some of the details they can change. And the ending of the season is really sad. And I didn't know it until we were getting ready to film the episode. Um, and so it's kind of things like that, the experience that you have when you're watching it for the first time, that's what we feel whenever we're prepping or whenever we, we get the thing and then we're get, we get the script and then we're about to film it a week later, you know what I mean? Um, but there's also, I knew that we were going to go to different planets, but I didn't know that it was going to be an entirely, you can see it in the trailer, an entirely water-based planet until we went to go film that, which took a lot of different stunts and a lot of special effects. You get Soaking wet a lot? Did you have to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a the whole... cold weather, too? In the cold weather. In Iceland, we did a lot of our um, exteriors of the planet that you see us in in the beginning of the season, which was beautiful. But then we start sailing the boat, and that was mostly shot in a winery outside of um, Vancouver in this kind of big pool almost and they built the top deck of the top deck of the Jupiter 2 so we could act on the actual top deck of the Jupiter 2 and it was much more actual sailing than I was expecting <laughs> much more like realistic you know raise the sails all of that yeah did you have any experience with sailing I took sailing lessons for, for the season, yeah. Wow. I was I walked on set and I was like I know what we're talking about I'm ready anybody else I think so. I think that we all were kind of briefed a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So everybody had some form of sailing experience, including yeah. Parker, who is... Who is a very good sailor on the show, yeah. yeah. Toby had great sailing experience from Black Sails. He has a history right. of being on a ship. Fair enough. Uh, I think we have some time for audience questions. Who has a question? Right here. Hi. So I was just wondering, in a series that has such kind of like grandiose backgrounds and effects going on, where do you look to ground yourself when a scene kind of calls for a more intimate moment? It is, we always remember that no matter how crazy or wild or big the circumstances get, it is the story about a family and the story about people. And more than anything, we know these people at this point. And we've been in their mindset no matter what. Um, when we're in the middle of filming a season, I do think like Penny. And there are times when I react like Penny and I talk like Penny that you feel 
like you can put yourself in that situation almost and how how would you react and as non-earthly as they are there are parallels in between when you're lost and you don't know where you are and you don't know what to do and the the parallels in between when you are faced with the circumstances of being life or death how would a person react um so it's kind of people first situation secondary one more Hi. I was Hi. wondering what your most memorable um, moment on set was. In, for this season or for both seasons? For both seasons. <sighs> the dancing in between all the shots? Yeah. Um, I will always remember the first scene that we ever shot of the whole season was the crashing in, in season one. It was the first episode. And none of us really knew each other yet but we were put in these chairs on the Jupiter that like the chairs actually shook. It was very violent. <laughs> and there was cameras going around and it was so technical that we shot it so many times. And that was the moment when all of us clicked in one instant because we were all kind of miserable together and we, all, we just rejoiced in the misery. Um, but in between that being from the get-go, super technical, super special effects, getting to know these characters, super high tension, super high energy, that from that we immediately went into knowing each other really well and that kind of, um, it felt like that for the rest of the season, if that makes sense. That was kind of the starting point. Uh, Mina, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so Lost much. Lost in Space 2 premieres December 24th, just yeah. in time for the holidays, right? Yeah. Go watch it with your family. Absolutely. Everybody give a huge round of applause for Mina Sunwall. Let's Thank hear it. Thank you so much.